Hello everyone, this is Video Boy, and welcome to Archipelago Devlog number 31. So the main theme of this devlog is JSON, so some of you may remember I mentioned that last week. So I thought I'd start off by explaining what it does and then I'll show you the result. So JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It was originally designed for JavaScript, but many people implemented it into other languages because it's so useful. So basically JSON is used to convert objects to and from text. I'll go over a little bit more in my tutorial series what objects are, but basically they're just the new variable type that a programmer makes that contains values and can do tasks. So for example, in Archipelago, I have a player object. It contains many values. I won't show them all, but the basic ones are username. So for this example, I'll use John. There's a X location for the coordinates, which I'll set to 60. Uh, the Y location, which for this example is 30. And just say they have a level, which would be 22. But there can be many, many more. So JSON is used to convert these values into a string that can later be converted back into the object. So for the player example, the JSON string would look something like this. So as you can see, it has the, the name, and then it tells you that the name is John, and it tells you that the X coordinate is 60, the Y coordinate is 30, and it tells you that the level is 23. So you can actually use this string and convert it back into an object and then use it. The use of this is that now these values can easily be stored in files and be sent over a connection. So this week I wanted to start map loading and tile data loading from a file. So I used JSON to do this. So I don't really have anything to actually show in the game. It looks pretty much like it used to, but it's more backend. So the way I used to create maps before was I would create an array in the code just like this. But now I change it so that it actually saves it as JSON in the file and I can load it. The problem with doing it in the code like I did before is that you can't have different maps, so all the maps would look exactly the same and that would be kind of boring and stupid. So this way I can create new maps and just save into the file and it'll just automatically load it. On the server I have a few new folders that I created. The main one is the islands folder. So that is how I'm going to start structuring the islands. So I'm going to have a folder with all the different islands and inside there they're going to have fo a folder for each individual island and each island will have their own uh, maps. So I'll open the islands folder so I can show you. And now you can see there's another folder inside and the folder is called Archipelago because that's for the island of Archipelago. So let's go inside of that. Okay, now you can see there's a file called island. So island is going to be the name for the main map of the island. So if you open it, you can actually see the JSON data of the island. So right now it contains only the tile and element data but I plan to add more stuff such as name or uh, like whether PvP is enabled and things like that. So it actually loads in the array from this JSON for telling the clients where all the tiles are and everything. But sadly I wasn't able to do the tile data loading just yet. I implemented most of it but I didn't really have enough time to finish it for this devlog. I'll definitely get it done for next week. So on to the goals for next week. I plan on doing a lot of JSON stuff still. I have to uh, finish up the map things and the tiles and the packets. I still haven't removed the libraries like I said I might do last week. It wasn't my main priority this week but I still want to do it. So I'm definitely going to do that this week. And there was one big thing that uh, I spent a lot of time doing. I was trying to find some sort of JSON library which is like a packet of code. I think I said that in the last devlog actually. I was trying to find one that would support JSON uh, parsing and converting. Uh, that supported GWT, which is for the HTML version. But I spent a lot of time trying to find a library for that. And then to my surprise, libgdx actually has one built in that's super easy to use. So I'm just going to use that and it's going to save a lot of space and I won't have to get external libraries either for that. Also this week I plan on starting a little bit on the login system, also the register system. That's also going to involve JSON. So I need to save the player data into files and stuff like that. So I'm only going to start it this week. I don't plan on actually finishing it. I'll probably finish it by not next week's devlog, but the week after. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like. And also, please subscribe if you're new to the channel. And if you want to see the last devlog, just click the last devlog button. 
And if you want to see the tutorial, I finally made the tutorial. And you can watch that on my channel. So I'll see you guys next week on Sunday. And I should also have a tutorial this Tuesday. So goodbye.